Hello and welcome to this Substance Painter tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new features in Substance Painter 2.6. The first feature I'd like to showcase is the ability to rename your texture sets. So here I have three texture sets and I can just simply double click on a texture set and change the name. I can also right click and choose to add a description. If I need to, I can also right click and choose to reset back to the original name. So we can now rename our texture sets and we can add descriptions to each set. Next, we're going to talk about the new resource updater. The resource updater will allow you to update resources within your Substance Painter project. And we're going to take a look at a few examples to illustrate this process. Let's start by taking a look at this base and we're going to change this material. So here at the top of the UI, I have my resource updater button. So I'll click this to open the resources updater window. And this window here is showing all of the resources that I'm using here in my painter project. And I can filter these resources based on this status. So here I'm set to all, so I'm seeing all the resources. And I can choose to look at either the outdated or non-outdated resources. I can also use this name filter to filter to a specific resource. Now in my case, what I'd like to do is replace this steel rust and wear substance. So here in the name filter, I'll just start to type in steel. And so you can see that substance gets filtered and I can click this icon to get some more information about it. So here this shows me the name, type, shelf, and so on. Now it's very important to understand this type. So this says substance. Now, when you're going to update a resource, you can only update resources of a similar type. So here I'm using substance. I have to update with another substance. Also, I have to make sure that these substance outputs are compatible. For example, this substance uses the metallic roughness outputs. So I couldn't update this with a substance that uses, let's say, only grayscale outputs. So again, I just got to make sure that I'm using the same output types. And I'll click this to open up the mini shelf. And now I can filter my results. So I know I want to use a substance. And I want to make sure that it's of a base material. And I'll scroll down. And I'm going to choose this wood American cherry. So here, let's move this window a little bit uh, out of the way so we can really see this. And again, here, let me just filter this. So we'll say base material. And then again, like I said, we're going to use this wood cherry. So we'll select this guy. And then all I have to do is click the Update button and the resource has been updated here in my layer stack all through this convenient UI. So now let's look at another example where we replace this logo. So again, I'm going to go to my resource updater and for the filter, I'm just going to start to type logo. So here I can see these logo alpha textures that were used to create this and I'm going to replace this one here. So I'll come over to the select new resource. Uh, here for image again, I'll just start to filter this with logo and I'm going to choose the substance painter logo and click update and now that resource has been updated directly here in my layer stack. So now I'd like to demonstrate my favorite aspect of the resource updater, which is I can update a resource for a stroke. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to paint some screws down the side of the body. So here I have just a layer, a paintable layer. And I have a material set up where I'm going to be painting on the normal channel using one of these hard surface textures here for a screw. So here, let's go ahead and paint this stroke. So we'll just uh, paint some screws down the side of the body here. So now I have this shape, but you know, I'd like to actually update this to a different screw type. So I can do that now with the updater. So we'll click the updater button. And so here in the filter section, I am just going to filter here for the screw resource that I'm using. And then I'll click the new resource button. Now I'm going to filter in my shelf so that I can find the specific type, which is a substance. And then we'll type texture. And then I'll just scroll down until I find the new resource that I want to use. So this time, uh, let's maybe use uh, this one here, which is our uh, PolyDrive Hexa. So we have this uh, set. Now all I have to do is click the update button. And here you can see that the resource used for my stroke has been updated with a completely different texture. So the last feature I want to showcase is the ability to reassign texture sets. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to rename one of my texture sets in a 3D program and re-import that mesh. So here I am in a 3D program. I'm going to come over to the base material and just rename this to platform. So now I'm going to re-export my mesh with the newly renamed material. Now in Painter, I'm going to re-import that mesh. So I'll go to Edit project configuration and I'm going to set my new project mesh and then I'll click OK. 
So here in my texture set list, you can see that my newly renamed material is here, platform, and the original material base has been disabled. However, I have lost all the texturing work that I've done here on my base. Substance Painter no longer knows how to take that base texture set and assign it to a material since the name has changed. Now in Substance Painter 2.6, we can actually fix this. So let's come over to this settings option and choose reassign texture sets. And so in this reassignment window, I can see my project texture sets and I can see the actual mesh material names set in the model file itself. Here I can see the disabled texture sets. Now the texturing that I've done is still available to me in this disabled texture set. And if I want to reassign that to the renamed version of that, which is platform, I can simply just left click and drag and drop this base onto my platform. Now notice that my mesh material name is still called platform. So if I wanted to rename that and keep that name in my 3D program, I still retain that naming structure. So now I'll click reassign. And my original texture set has been relinked to match the renamed material that I set in the model file itself. Using the texture set reassignment window, I can reestablish links between the texture sets in my project and the mesh materials.